This time on Dream Builders, a mountain-loving family brings an Aspen-style lodge to Virginia, and a house that rises with the canyons yet blends with the desert, plus a gem of a countertop, surfaces made with semi-precious stones. These stories and more, just ahead. It's an architectural icon of Colorado brought to Virginia. Hi, I'm Scott Morgan. Welcome to Dream Builders. Seeking a Rocky Mountain retreat, the owners and their designers crafted a home with the look and feel of an Aspen ski lodge. We'll show you how it was done in a moment. Later in the show, a breathtaking contemporary among the cacti of Arizona and a Washington, D.C. colonial made over for modern times. But we begin here in Virginia with this Great Falls Lodge. It's nearly 2,000 miles from Aspen, Colorado to Great Falls, Virginia, but Debbie and Rob West wanted to build a house that would bridge the gap between their favorite vacation spot and their home. We were really inspired by Colorado. Since we can't live in Colorado full time, we decided that we would create a little mini piece of Colorado here. Make that a 12,000 square foot piece, covered in stone and stucco and situated on a heavily wooded five acre lot. It's a real bucolic setting and it's uh, very pastoral, very quiet, secluded, you know, far from the maddening crowd kind of thing. While most homes in this area tend to be colonials, architect Charles Moore chose a modified Colorado ski lodge as the basic design for the house. Using the word lodge sort of speaks to a more intimate feeling. We wanted to build a relatively large house, but we didn't want it to come off looking huge. To make the house look smaller, Moore broke it into smaller pieces, creating clipped gables that branch off from each side of the main ridge beam of the house. The lower roof line makes it look like a one and a half story house, but because the smaller gables don't come all the way down to meet the main gable, there's plenty of wall space on the second floor. That made framing the roof complicated for builder Jeff Robbins. Every single rafter is individually cut and individually nailed and secured and uh, uh, we worked intently with the architect on this because there were questions and concerns throughout the whole project as far as weight and structure and uh, we worked our way through it and it worked out great. When it came to choosing a roofing material, the couple wasn't interested in cedar shakes or asphalt found on most Virginia homes. Borrowing the idea of clay tiles commonly found in the West, they chose a more durable concrete tile dyed green to complement the earth colors of the stucco and stone. There was a lot of talk about changing the roof and making it, you know, kind of more normal and uh, Deb and I wouldn't do it. If we couldn't do the roof the way we wanted to do it, the house wasn't going to kind of be the right house for us. There are special design touches throughout the house. The wood and stone look of the entranceway carries into the foyer, bringing the warm, welcoming feel of a lodge into the house. Scattered among the flagstones are leaf and salamander shapes. They're not meant to be obvious, they're meant to be somebody says, oh wow, that's really neat. It's, it's working. <laughs> Debbie and Rob insisted on using top quality materials even when they were offered similar products for less money. They chose a stone from Delaware for the outside of the house and the massive fireplace in the family room. It's got a little bit less gray in it, it's a, it's a browner stone. And uh, I think it's beautiful and it's different um, from what you would expect to find here in the, the woods of Virginia. The floors are mahogany, as are the stairs with their custom wrought iron balustrades. The floors were an integral part to this project and as you go through here, you can see that the finishes used are indicative of the style that they wanted this house to be. And the architect and the owner worked intent on it and everything they put in here is of the highest quality. My favorite furniture is the mahogany flooring um, and that will always be my favorite piece of furniture in the house. To make sure the interiors were as well put together as the exteriors, Debbie worked with designer Pat Bavacqua from the beginning of the project. Charlie would design uh, the spaces and there were a number of different versions of things and we would plug in how we felt Deb and Rob would live in those spaces. Because moving to a new home can often be difficult for children, 
The Wests wanted to make sure they did everything possible to ease the transition for their son and daughter. We designed the kids' room so that they would live in it and enjoy it, and we picked Josh's room to be a cowboy theme. He's got that great bleached wood furniture and then the warm blues that go around it. The cowboy theme is continued in the bathroom, where Debbie has also incorporated some cute critters into the tile. The motif in Sister Ariana's bathroom is more feminine, with floral designs in the tile and on the floor. Lots of fabric also adds some softer touches to the girl's bedroom. While each bedroom is large, the gabled roofs keep them from seeming too big. I think that it makes for a much cozier environment in both of the children's rooms. I think it really creates a sense that it's their own space. Debbie's space is usually behind the desk in her deep red office on the first floor, or in the kitchen with its warm wooden cabinets and its rather unusual countertop. It's a Jerusalem limestone. It comes from Haifa, Israel. And it just has a very different feel to it. It's very irregular, and I like that about it. If you look real close, you could find fossils in it. Another historical touch is found in the formal living room, where paving stones, taken from the streets of Jerusalem and dating back to biblical times, have been used around the fireplace. Like almost every room in the house, the living room also has a vast expanse of windows. It's sort of modern, but it's really within a traditional context. There are many windows to satisfy the needs of bringing in light and to provide view, and they're all traditional windows. Rob and Debbie are still working to finish the inside of their home. The master suite, which takes up one entire end of the house, will be the last thing to be completed. Among the first areas to be finished was the family room. The main gable that runs through the room creates a soaring ceiling while the comfortable furniture grouped around the fireplace creates the sense of the cozy lodge they were looking for. The family room is uh, one example of a, a space that was made larger because as we laid out the furniture and, and looked at the way it would, uh, would function for them, it just simply wasn't large enough. There's still plenty of room to grow in their new house, including the unfinished basement. But right now, Rob and Debbie take great pride in the fact that their attention to detail and commitment to quality have created a dream home that looks like a vacation home. We wanted a home that was styled this way with these types of finishes that when I came home from work, I felt like uh, the only thing missing were ski boots in front of the porch. Still to come, a sophisticated shelter for enjoying the canyons of southern Arizona and reinventing an American classic, a colonial for modern times. Dream Builders will be right back. Welcome back to Dream Builders. I'm Scott Morgan. Wanting trees and rolling green spaces, the owners of this lodge purchased five acres in the Virginia countryside. But an Arizona couple wanted cactus and canyon views, so they built a home that seems to float above the desert. High above Tucson, Arizona, among the desert cactus, is where Gene Falk and Susan Daniels decided to build a visually captivating house. I was partial to the mountains, mountain view, but my husband was partial to the city views, and this property had both. And we wanted to have a house that uh, enabled us to take advantage of the site. Architect Bart Vorsanger responded with a house that's contemporary, yet sensitive to the desert landscape. Roofs rise with the canyons, and huge mahogany-framed windows allow the owners to enjoy the cactus and their natural surroundings. It's really kind of a hybrid between almost a commercial building and a residential building because the windows here are extremely large. And the whole point of this is to open up the vista of this fabulous landscape. Like a commercial building, the house is framed in steel to create a grouping of pavilions crowned by dramatic curved roofs. One of the reasons for the 
roof to have these inverse scallops is that we want you to be able to stand here and not have the mountain cut off at their knees. With limited access to the canyon site, builder Jeff Wilming built the house from the back to the front. One of the things that uh, complicated it even more is we did not want to disturb the site around the house at all. We wanted the house to look like it was dropped into the desert after it was done. Another challenge of the build was finding glass large enough to fit the windows. The glass at the rear of the house are uh, 8 by 14 pieces of half-inch tempered glass. And there were only two tempering ovens in the, in the nation big enough to temper that glass. Uh, it was also, it was all set by crane over the roof of the house. Working with the sloping side, the architect and builder positioned the house so that the main living spaces are located on the upper level, including the master suite with its window on the desert, and the master bath with a custom-made concrete tub. From the front, the upper level is reached by a long staircase next to a fountain. At the rear of the house, a pool with a built-in fountain supplies a cooling oasis. This is an enjoyable house. You get up in the morning, walk through, look out both ways. If you want to go outside, you go outside, practically from every room. Tucked under the main living level are guest rooms for the couple's grown children that are reached from the stairs off the main living area. We didn't want to have this huge house with lots of empty rooms that we had to walk by, and, and this layout was just wonderful. Separating the living room from the kitchen and family room is a pivoting door framed in glass and steel. I think the, ha the house is informal enough that we we're comfortable in every room. There's no place that we, we don't feel like plopping down on a chair or, or a sofa. Tall and angular, the rooms are softened with materials and furnishings that harmonize with the tones of the desert outside. We wanted these spaces to be really kind of exalting, but at the same time, I think it's important, it's incredibly important that you not lose a sense of intimacy in the house. To warm the main living spaces, mahogany is applied to floors, walls, and ceilings. In the living room, the fireplace wall is covered in French limestone. If you look at the color of the fireplace and these stones, they're, they're grays and warm browns, uh, sort of all these variegated colors moving through them, and that's the color of this landscape around here. Given the room's spare lines, tolerances between the interior finishes posed another problem for the builder to solve. There are no casings, there are no moldings. Everything is, is material to material. If it was as much of a, as a quarter inch out, it showed. The finishes were, were very challenging on this house. I love the materials coming together. It's everything I hoped it would be. Jean and Susan are also pleased especially with the way their home allows them to directly experience the desert without having to sweat the heat. It's a shelter, but it's like an open shelter. It's almost like uh, camping out. When I come back here, I love it. I mean, it's just so exciting to walk in the door and, and see these views. It's just, it just makes you feel very alive. It's wonderful. Can you identify this house? It was in this home in Ketchum, Idaho, that a literary giant spent his last years. The answer when Dream Builders returns. Did you identify the mystery house? Ernest Hemingway bought this home in Idaho after leaving Cuba in 1959. Thirty years earlier, Papa had completed the novel For Whom the Bell Tolls at the nearby Sun Valley Lodge. The modest three-story structure is solid concrete with exceptional views of the Sawtooth Mountains. The interior decor is basically the same as the author left it when he died in 1961. Welcome back to Dream Builders. I'm Scott Morgan in Great Falls, Virginia. Many people seek outside help when it comes to furnishing and decorating their dream home. But our next homeowners stayed in-house and relied on their own skills as professional designers. 
Like many homeowners in Washington, D.C., Rafael Gonzalez and Michael Bell decided to renovate rather than relocate. Their colonial-style home on a corner lot in American University Park offered the perfect opportunity to expand. Once we saw this house, from the outside, we walked in and we, we visualized it immediately, both of us. We knew exactly how the flow would be. We knew exactly how the spaces would be. Remodeling the 1936 Colonial was easier for these homeowners since they both work in the design field. Raphael's an architect by training and I'm an interior designer, so that could be your worst nightmare or your biggest benefit. <laughs> Fortunately, it was a benefit uh, for the two of us. Taking advantage of the corner lot, they built a two-story addition between the yard and garage. Clad in wood, the new wing harmonizes with an older addition at the opposite end of the house. There had been an existing porch on one side of the house that had been enclosed probably 20 years ago. And we took that roof line and the siding and the windows from that old addition and mirrored that in the new addition. Inside, the addition focuses on a large living space just off the kitchen that the owners call their great room. We really live in the great room. I enjoy cooking and it gives me the opportunity to be able to cook uh, and also enjoy our guests at the same time. To build the addition, Michael and Raphael hired Dana Preister, who quickly found himself tackling a more ambitious project. This ended up being a whole house renovation. It just isn't it about the great room, but the, the way they incorporated the spaces and had them all flow together. Above the great room is a new master bedroom and a large master bath. To create enough room for a shower, Dana built a dormer that extends over the back roof. From the front, driving by, you'd never know that there's a great master bathroom up there with a lot of closet space. To support the bathroom, Dana built the great room ceiling using truss joists of engineered wood. It's stronger than dimensional lumber and you can span greater distances without having a beam underneath or a bearing wall or, or columns, uh, so it makes for a longer span. The opening between the great room and kitchen is bridged by a steel beam that's disguised with moldings. Doorways between the living and dining rooms were also enlarged and framed in new trim. We opened them as much as we could, still trying to define the rooms, but also creating a visual flow from one end of the house to the other. To unite the addition to the rooms beyond, Michael and Raphael hand stenciled a diamond pattern on the dining room floor. You tape off the light, and you stay in the dark, take all the tape off, and then it's polyurethane. Really, it's not that difficult to do, it just takes a little bit of time. On the other side of the stair hall, the original living room was turned into a library that leads to an enclosed porch used by Raphael as his office. It mirrors this great room at the other end of the house because it's all windows. At the end of the great room, French doors lead to an outdoor terrace. One of the things that we really, again, liked about this corner lot was uh, it gave us the opportunity to add a terrace and a pergola between the house and the old garage space to create almost a, an exterior room. And even the garage was transformed into an office for Michael's design business. So it's not a large space, but provides a wonderful area to have all the things that go along with interior design, lots of catalogs and samples and things, but also separate from the house. For Michael and Raphael, their extensive renovations have paid off in creating comfortable living spaces as well as a quiet refuge within this urban neighborhood. Not a day goes by that a neighbor doesn't come by and says, wow, you know, you guys have done proud our neighborhood. You know, as an architect, that's the best compliment. Just ahead, jewelry for the home. Get ready for gemstone counters. Dream Builders will be right back. For questions or comments, please write to Dream Builders, care of HGTV, Box 50970, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37950. Be sure to include the episode number and your daytime phone number.
Welcome back to Dream Builders. I'm Scott Morgan. The limestone counters of this Virginia home have a soft and natural look. But if glamorous is what you're looking for, you may want to consider the latest entry into the market. Surfaces made of semi-precious stone on this week's Field Notes. Deborah Tendler loves the look of stone. Since moving into her home in Calabasas, California, she replaced the kitchen counters with French limestone and the vanity top in the master bath with Italian limestone. I have children, this house is a working house. I wanted it to be beautiful but also practical and that's, when I, that's why I went with stones that look and feel natural. Now she's decided to install a new vanity in the guest bathroom, but it isn't your typical countertop. This one is made with a gemstone called sodalite. I wanted to have something special in the, in the bathroom downstairs. It makes it look antique and modern at the same time, and I just fell in love with it. Although the counters are installed in the usual way, each one is handmade at a factory in Israel. Product representative Maggie Amir says the gems are semi-precious stones, just like the ones used in jewelry. They take actually a, a rough rock of a semi-precious stone and they slice it and they put it in a special frame to make it a non-porous surface you add resin and then you cure the, the slab uh, and after it you polish it. The counters come in a variety of stones such as lapis, carnelian and blue lace agate. Each one is supposedly as tough as granite or as any other stone surface. It doesn't stain, it doesn't scratch, the, you can put anything on it. For busy mom Deborah Tendler, the powder room is now always dressed to the nines. It turned out better than I wanted. I, I'm really happy with the look, with the feel of it. I, it's, I couldn't ask for anything better. From this Rocky Mountain style lodge to a made over colonial in Washington, D.C., there's no decision or detail too small when it comes to building our dream homes. We'll show you more next time on Dream Builders. From Great Falls, Virginia, I'm Scott Morgan. So long.